Hey guys, it's Trice here, formerly known as Mr. Dragon Triple Zero, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Austin FX4 Expedite Taxicab. This is a near replica of the 1962 Austin FX4 Taxicab, which is one of the most prolific taxicabs in the world made in the UK. This particular cab was a limited production variant of the FX4 designed to pick up passengers and drop them off at their destination in record time. Instead of keeping the 2.2 liter gas powered A70 engine or the more common diesel engines, I decided to put in a larger and much more powerful engine that blows those two off the map. For the specs and details about this vehicle, stay tuned as I'll explain throughout this portion of the video. The body that I've used to make this high-octane cabbie is made by a modder named Grofy Bruce in his classic London Black Cab mod file. It's available in the Automation Steam Workshop and you can check it out with the link in the description below. It has a lap time of 1 minute 40 seconds 57 milliseconds at the quote unquote Top Gear Test Track and 2 minutes 45 seconds 91 milliseconds at the Automation Track. It has a top speed of 125 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 8.7 seconds flat. This vehicle is powered by a custom 4.2 liter inline 6 engine that produces 167.1 horsepower and 224.3 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 16 miles per gallon and weighs 2,852.9 pounds or 1,294.1 kilograms. And for the market, it's a shocker that it's a competitor in both the pony budget and standard pony car markets, but it does poorly in the muscle car and family sports car markets, which isn't that surprising. In terms of how I made the FX4, the panel material we made out of steel with a ladder chassis made out of galvanized steel. With a front launch to engine placement, which is our only option, and the front suspension uses a double wishbone because source has said it's an independent suspension for the front, and the rear suspension uses a basic solid axle leaf. For the engine, it's an inline 6 engine bay at a cast arm with the bore set to 89.5 millimeters and a stroke at 111 millimeters, which gets the engine size to 4,190 cubic centimeters, or right around 4.2 liters, and it uses pushrod headers made out of cast iron. For the crank car rods and pistons, typical 60s technology and materials, all that good stuff, cast iron crankshaft, cast crown rods, cast pistons, plus one quality, because why not? For the compression and everything, it is set at a below normal but at above low 7.3 to 1 ratio. The camp profile is still set as is to a 40, and superchargers are still not in the game. Turbochargers didn't exist only for planes, so for the fuel system, we got ourselves a four barrel twin carburetor set up with a standard intake running on regular leaded fuel, with the fuel mixture set to a 14.6. The ignition timing bumped up a little bit to a 54, and the RPM went set to 4,500 RPM. For the headers, we're using short cast headers. Our only option is a single exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to 57.1 millimeters, which is 2.25 inches. And we got no cats thanks to it being a leaded fuel engine. No first muffler, but we got ourselves a reverse full muffler for the second one to reduce the amount of noise to around 40 decibels, according to this here graph of a 40.5, which is doable. For the drive type, we're using a rear-wheel drive manual 4-speed with the top speed set to 125.5 miles per hour, even a go to 130, but for realistic sake, 125 is good enough, 130 is a tad bit overkill, especially the tire technology back in the day, even though they still use vulcanized rubber, but hey, it's the 60s, you never know. So for the wheels and everything, we got ourselves some medium compound wheels with the tire whip set to an even 185 millimeters front and back, running on some 16 inch steel rims. For the brakes, they are not that common for this type of vehicle for this era, but for the sake of stopping this vehicle, we're using solid disc brakes front and back. They're both one pistons, but the front brake size is set to 325 millimeters and the rear at 300 millimeters. Pad type as is, brake bias made it more towards the front front of a 64 36% under tray nothing much brake air full 10 interior wise so I did not put an interior whatsoever so let's imagine so we got ourselves one seat for the passenger section just a driver's seat because back then with these cabbies they only had just a driver's seat and I think a fold down passenger seat on the left side of the vehicle like here you got yourselves the driver's seat right here and a fold out passenger seat because this section would be like your fire extinguisher and a bunch of other safety features and all that good stuff in the cab and the back seat 
Got ourselves three seats, standard interior, standard AM radio, nothing that much because it's a cabby after all. So for the safety and everything, for this particular vehicle, no power steering. This was until the 80s until they had power steering and servo hydraulic brakes according to some sources. And standard 1950 safety standards. And last but not least, with the suspension of the vehicle, standard everything. Standard springs, twin two dampers, fast sway bars, running on a normal preset with the ride height jacked up quite a bit thanks to the equippiness of the tire body, well the body of the vehicle, and the tire because if I'll drop this down as is, you got the tires pretty much covered up right here, which is a tad too unrealistic, but anyways, the ride height as is to 250 millimeters seems reasonably realistic. Despite only four problems we got here, such as power steering, front brake force being too low, wheel spin clearance issues, let's go to BMG Drive and test this vehicle out. So here we are at the map of East Coast USA, and ignore this in the background, which you got the trees that have some no texture glitches, so if I'm over here, you got the standard issue, no texture orange color, but we move closer, the textures just reappear and reappear, which hopefully that won't be much of a big distraction throughout this portion of the video, so take a look at the vehicle. In terms of just trying to recreate the FX4, I mean, this looks pretty spot on, and first thing I want to notice is these plates here back then, especially over there in Europe, these were like huge plates, like look at these. You got a big ass British plate on here, even though it's the European Union plate, the modern day version, but these plates were just massive back then compared to standard issue, like USA, North American plates. An interesting highlight is that these turn indicators, if I turn to hazards, these are your indicators, especially for the 60s of the FX4, which they call these bunny ear indicators. Instead of having the turn indicators like in the back or like the front of the vehicle right here, which they did add in the 70s, 80s, and later on, when they first released the FX4, these were your indicators right here on the roof, but like mounted somewhat at a 45 degree angle towards like the like sides of the roof to above the door trim, the body trim of the car, which that is very, very interesting in how they did that. And lastly, for the front of the vehicle, look at the headlights right here. You got your standard issue front headlight. Hopefully, I'm not blinding you here. But on top of this is, I think I call it like an auxiliary headlight. Well, you got these mounted on both sides of the vehicle. If I turn the headlight on, that's your headlight, that's your high beam, and that's it turned off. Is that you got this big old, like, auxiliary miniature headlight on top of the vehicle mounted in front of the mirror. You got, like, this piece here, followed by a chrome little bar that holds onto the license plate and a chrome piece that goes on the vehicle that assembles this auxiliary headlight which is kind of weird on how they did that so this part of the video we're gonna be doing our basic performance test with this here cabby for our performance test the first we're gonna be doing is a 0 to 62 acceleration test second a 62 to 0 brake test and lastly a top speed one which i guarantee with a 4.2 liter engine i think it'll do it compared to 2.2 liter which was kind of mediocre and had a top speed of like 75 miles an hour but hopefully it will achieve its top speed with this powerful engine. So right now, start with the 0 to 62 acceleration test starting now. Hit the gas and immediately greet it with some wheel spin, second gear to some basic beam and you drive upshift, downshift, and upshift and downshifting. So 0 to 62 time in 9.87 seconds, kind of mediocre in 5.3 or 534.86 feet. Let me try that again, but let me manually do the gears here. So I'm in neutral. Who cares about that? So first gear, go. And acceleration. And second gear. Okay, here we go. A little bit of steering there. And 0 to 62 in 8.18 seconds of 420.71 feet. Almost a 420 to 69. That would have been very, very epic of a gamer moment of achieving that distance. So braking wise, let's get this study to a 62 and brake now. No ABS, so we're skidding, sliding, a little bit of drifting, and here we go. 62 to 0 in 3.63 seconds of 159.56 feet. Seems okay despite having huge brakes, but this is somewhat of a heavy vehicle. But having a braking time around this time and a braking distance around this distance seems acceptable for a non-ABS vehicle and how old this vehicle is, but I don't care. So for a top speed run, it's already in effect. We got a better 0 to 62, no surprise because we were going downhill of a 713, 344 distance. Fourth gear, 90 miles an hour. Gonna hit 100 miles an hour right here. And we're coming up to a little corner here. Uh, 110, uh, 110 airspeed right now. Gonna get close to the wall here and then dive into the first corner. Gonna dive in and 105 miles an hour, 110 ish, but I don't think it's gonna work. Uh, top speed run fail. And get that here, and get ready for a, okay, roof crash into a guardrail right here. So 110 miles an hour was top speed, so 125 was a fail. Hi to UI, slow down to 16, go. 
And I know it's going the other way, so here comes another roof crash, and nothing... Oh, nothing that interesting, so just full time it all the way. Uh, I said full time on the way, so pull! Oh my god, we grabbed on the pole, and look at the back end of the vehicle. Let me stop this real quick, stop the vehicle. So there's the tire, there's the back of the vehicle, so let me get back on the road here. So F7 it here, and... Okay, this is the back end of the vehicle. I swear, what's like hitting the brakes? What the hell? Dude, I about ripped this off the chassis. I mean, look at the back end of the vehicle. I mean, look at the back end of the vehicle you got here, and it's just like torn straight up in the air, like... Seven, eight feet high in the air. It's been shifted upward for some odd reason, just grabbing onto the pole right here. Which apparently that roof crash was interesting after all. I thought it was gonna be just a boring slide, scrape, and dape, and all that good stuff. But after that destruction, it's hella mingled up. It's still running for some odd reason, but can it still drive? Go back to first gear, oh, reverse, reverse. And the answer is no. So that's gonna be a nuclear powered oof, I swear. What's the top speed in fourth gear? Uh, DeLorean speed. So anyways, let's switch this up a little bit and go to a time trial run. And for the sake and the theme of this video, let's go to a newly downloaded map I just downloaded, which, uh, is it on here or... It's probably free roam, which I have to do a hot lap method on here. So go to Brands Hatch. Literally, I got Brands Hatch on here, which the link to download this is down in the description below. So let's go to Brands Hatch and do a hot lap run, do two laps of this. So here I am at Brands Hatch, and it's kind of interesting, the author of this here map has poured other maps from the set of Corsa into here, which includes the Nürburgring and the Spa Francourt Champs, aka just the Spa from Belgium. Like I said, the link to download this is down in the description below, it's in the BeamNG forums, where you can just download this map, install it, and try it out yourselves. So let's get on ready to start two laps of hot lapping at Brands Hatch, the only thing that this vehicle was made in Britain, by starting off in three, Two, one, go. Hit the gas, and time starts now. So, pretty much delayed in our first start, so who even cares about that? So, better 0 to 60 times since we're on a racetrack? No, way worse. All right, first corner, a little bit twitchy on the oversteering, like mild oversteering, and third gear, well, we're full third gear, thanks to Beam and G. So, this is my first run doing this in Beam and G Drive. I've raced this before, and holy... I, okay, I kind of wussed out in the corner because of these brakes here. So yeah, I did race this before in like Gran Turismo and everything, but never in Beam and G. This is my first time on Beam and G. Major understeer, but we're okay. I might as well do this in realistic gearbox. It's me shifting by itself. So an X to up shift, which I have it set on my PS4 controller. Make my move here, make a left, go across the curb. And let's just do a right. Do a, do a short course. We do a short one and then do a long one. We go to second gear, coming into our final corner, and that was just me panic upshifting, goddammit. Coming into our first lap, we got a 1 minute, 14 seconds, 709 milliseconds. Almost to the point where I can't even read. So oversteering into the uh, sand we go. Going off-roading and back to on-roading. It's like the vehicle's handling is somewhat unpredictive here. You got this major wheel spin. Look at this wheel spin here. And wait for it to, uh, kind of early any upshift again. So you got, like, some oversteering, and B twitch the car to a mild snap oversteer to just B understeering, and B going off-road here. It's just, just unpredictable. And coming into our final lap, a much better final lap on the short course version of Brands Hatch. So we get a time of 1 minute, 10 seconds, 309 milliseconds. Let's crash this out and start the long, uh, long version out. So, uh, full time. There we go, this here, that here, flipped over, and back on our four wheels. And let's just stop the timer. Which makes our third lap a record-setting 14 seconds, 351 milliseconds, which that doesn't count whatsoever. So here's the vehicle, let's shift it over, can we steer? Yes, we can steer for some odd reason, and we broke the tire. Now we can't steer. And not only that, you got the side of the vehicle, and then the front of the vehicle right here. I can return the headlights. Now the headlights are right at your face. Can it still go? Uh, damn right, because it's an automation vehicle. It's like a majority of automation vehicles, whether it's front engine, mid engine, rear engine. These are like damn near bulletproof. Look at this. Radio Brands 87.7 FM. Not sponsored by them. Thanks for the not so sponsorship, guys. I'm just joking. All right, so I set up a barrier to make myself not go to the short track version and do go to the log track version, which we're we'll doing one whole lap of this here course. So where is the parameters to the point where the time starts? Is it like to the front of the vehicle, the mid of the vehicle, wherever? So right here, the, the front portion of the vehicle. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. 
we go. Major, major wheel spin because of that launch and second gear. And better 0 to 62. Yes or no? The answer is still worse. Nice little miniature drift for me slamming on the brakes because kind of interesting. These brakes are like not even that strong compared to like your usual brakes when you don't have ABS brakes with like, these types of vehicles, whether it's disc, drum, whatever, and exceeded track limits. See, I'm not like skidding out that much. See, like slamming the brakes. So I'm walking up in the tires, ignoring that little shipping container because that's my excuse not to go straight. So my excuse that I have to turn left and not crash into that just to avoid that to take the long section of the track out. Like I was trying to demonstrate, like I was jamming on the brakes and it didn't even lock, well it did lock up the tires but I like locked up and just like slide over I could hear, look. You do get some sliding and everything, but you're not like drifting, sliding over 90 degrees every time you slam on the brakes for a non-ABS vehicle, which is kind of, well, better and more ideal for a vehicle like this, which I do give credit. And what I don't is the inconsistent steering where you got some like moderate oversteer at like slow speeds where it's like mild snap oversteering, but you do get some major understeering at high speeds. Like around highway speeds, you do get the understeering, but some like moderate to minor to moderate oversteer so you got mo some some understeer right there but at a lower speed around like like municipal road speeds like 30 40 miles an hour that's where you get some of the oversteer but if you go much higher you get understeer and here we go at the final portion of the straightaway we do get a lap time probably in the 215s probably 218 so lap time in a two no 19 2 minutes 19 seconds 449 milliseconds not too bad for a cabbie but it'll do here we go with that major understeer around highway speeds gonna gun it and here we go gonna crash out straight ahead into me at a speeds of around 80 miles an hour so get ready to stop the simulation and free cam it to over here hide the ui and go to 16 times slow mo get a better camera angle and go 60 times slow mo and Excuse me, into the wall we go, and there goes the front of the vehicle, there goes all the sand, pebbles, all the good stuff just flying in the air, and full time. And surprisingly, the engine still runs for some odd reason. Why is that, man? So damage-wise, wow, almost similar to the first crash earlier with the short time trial, but interesting. The rear of the vehicle is virtually unscathed, left side not so much, right side not so much, front it's been shifted 60 degrees to the left because, like, earlier, you got the side of the vehicle, here's the front, here's the headlights, and here's the tires. Are the tires gonna break when we steer? No, it don't. And last week, can it still drive? Yes, it does. Hit the wall. Thanks. So last part of the video, let's take this down to Karja Arena to see if this old vehicle will keep up to its grandchildren of black taxi cabs right here. So here we are at the top of Car Jump Arena with the expedited FX4 by Austin. So we got ourselves a 2 light, a 3 light, a 4 light, and a 5 light. Get ready to hit the gas pedal right about now. Hit the gas pedal and here is the vehicle. Just coming down and go back to rigor cam and go to second gear and go to third gear. Better 0 62 time of almost 6 seconds of 218.69 feet. That's a pretty nice number ladies and gentlemen. And max gears going over to speed and X speed. 138 and surprisingly it didn't even do the little uh over rev risk or none of that and almost nailed it at here we go over rev risk 148 we're drifting to the right left at in the wall there in the pool and there it'll end right here let's shut the engine off to save the engine this work of engineering of a 4.2 liter inline six engine and we're upside down got a shifted ass wheel is it still a tat barely attached probably by a couple of nodes or whatever so try to get this up right and we do so right here so here is the aftermath construction vehicle still the usual downward slope to the right to the left type of collision with the front of the vehicle just how it's all bent up and everything the sides of the vehicle some with the left side the rear again not a whole lot and the right side some especially towards the uh, a pillar section and wheel wise we got this at a oh my ridiculous we could get this right wheel to the almost flat to the ground here. Look at this. This right wheel is literally flat. I swear. Drive it. Eh, I didn't go nowhere. I forgot this is rear wheel drive, that front wheel drive, or all wheel drive, or a 4x4. Damn it, I gotta spawn at the top again. So instead, do one more. Let's just do a drift, and I swear, get a better collision. Okay, where we're flipping over, I, I swear. 
almost landed. I swear we do some like super fly type of ordeal to like land the vehicle by just drifting, flipping, and doing all that good stuff. So we do get a better collision. And we're gonna rest up right into the sand here. And there goes a tire assaulting me. And it'll end up right in the pool where it should belong. Damage-wise, now we got damage virtually all four corners of the vehicle. Finally got some rear damage from tumbling around everything. Some damage in the right-hand side. We got this right tire missing, the front of the vehicle. Sloped downward quite a bit. Left side of the vehicle, we got this tire missing. And some damage in the left side of the vehicle, just in terms of body damage and everything. So, guess that'll be it for the vehicle. Now let's go to the highway to wrap up the video. So here we are at this portion of the highway, so we're going to be driving down as fast as we can and try to crash at the last bridge pillar at a very high speed to get a high speed crash test going. So 0 to 62 wise, 7.39 seconds at 334.83 feet, seems okay, top speed we go, 127, and get ready to stop now, 129 miles an hour, maybe 130 upon collision, I swear, can we merge inside? Uh, sort of, I could, right? Uh, I gotta FOV it. So, slow it down, all the way down to 16 times, so let's just, uh, 16 it here, get on the ready, and 100 times, and enjoy. So here's the front of the vehicle, let's, whoa, watch out. Here's the front of the vehicle, and here it goes, there's the front, getting smooshed in, and smooshed outwards, which is pretty interesting, and here's the structure of the vehicle, just smashed in, body panels, and everything are all wiggling out of place, back and forth, side to side, everywhere in direction, and full time. Are you kidding me? The engine still runs. There's a license plate. Is that for the? That's the rear. That's the front of the vehicle. The front license plate. Uh, somewhat left the chat. We got major damage to the vehicle, and it somehow, somewhat, still runs for some odd reason here. Let me try to get the node grabber here to cooperate with me. Seriously, it's like the node grabber area. It's like it's becoming more and more difficult to work with, it seems like. So here is the vehicle. We just smash this down like a freaking smart car or something. A smart 4-2 or whatever. So front wise... <laughs> Front wise, we smashed this out pretty good. We did that and did that so well. The rear of the vehicle seems okay. Some loose polygons because that's what it does for an automation vehicle for a high speed collision is you get loose polygons here and there. And that's how you got to deal with a vehicle like this. So in terms of damage, just smooshed up, made itself a subcompact and it will be the future of London cabbies. Which probably would be because of the global warming and everything in general it's surrounding us. Last week, can it go? Yes, it can. And wait, wait, wait. Uh, how well? It's steering well. So flat land right here. Okay, drive. Okay, it's driving at... No way. No. <laughs> A new breed of taxis are here, ladies and gentlemen. It can't steer left because a major damage to the left side of the vehicle. And some of the front left, especially the front left tire, it's, uh, I can't steer now with the left side of the wheel. Uh, it's jammed in place and everything, so steering left is useless. Steering left, I can't do so. Steering right, you can. So, this is a shocker. Let's just end its misery, end its misery right here, end its misery right here. God damn, this vehicle is so indestructible that it just can't leave it there as is. So that'll do it with automation and BBG drive with the Austin FX4 Expedite Taxi Cab. Despite having a bigger engine that's virtually twice as big as the A70 engine made by Austin, it's not too bad in terms of performance, but handling wise, it's kind of a pain. You get some of that mild snap oversteer at low speeds, but at high speeds, you get some of that major understeer, despite having some medium compound tires and fairly beefy 185mm tires front and back. You may notice a good looking cabbie, especially for a near replica and recreation version of the FX4. I'm pretty much satisfied with the design. From the front of the vehicle with its auxiliary headlights, bunny ear style indicators, and pretty much just everything about this vehicle. I'm pretty much satisfied with the results, except for the steering. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you'll miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media, which is down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.